All right, welcome back everybody to another video. And of course, we're still gonna be talking about Daigo today because Daigo inspires and opens the eyes of the fighting game community. Oh. <laughs> What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another, another what? What is this? This is a show? What do I do here? I talk about fighting games. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. We're talking about Daigo and how Daigo can open the eyes of the FGC to realize the potential in every situation. So if you didn't see CPT Japan 3 this past weekend or whenever you're watching this, you definitely missed out on a lot of high level action, but I'm gonna go over a specific moment that got people questioning everything they thought they knew about Street Fighter V. Let's go ahead and take a look at this clip. You may have already seen this, you may have already not. Let's go ahead and give it a, a quick watch here. This is how he won the first round, was just by this pressure. Wow, Tiger, what for? This is how he won the first round, was just by this pressure. Wow, Tiger, what for? It's such a simple, quick moment, but you could spend a whole YouTube video breaking down what's going on here. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So let's go ahead and break down the moment where Daigo on the verge of sun woke up, walked forward and threw Kawano in grand finals of CPT Japan 3. What was Daigo thinking? What was he trying to counter? What could this man be calculating in his mind to do such a brazen call out at that exact moment? Let's take a look at the exact mechanics of why this is a galaxy brain move and what actually it beats in game. So for reference, for context, Daigo is in the corner. He is essentially one interaction away from stun. If you take a look here at the stun bar, he's not one jab away, but a throw or a shimmy where uh, Kawano would bait the throw with and then punish with a normal into a buffer would definitely stun him. So basically it's the final guessing moment for Daigo. If he guesses wrong, it's probably gonna be the end of the round or he's gonna be close to dying. So he is definitely in a high pressure situation here. He has full super meter, but he does not have V trigger. This is the situation we're gonna be breaking down here and we're gonna be analyzing the options that both of these players could apply and go over the rock, paper, scissors dynamic here because surprise, surprise, Street Fighter V, it's not as simple as throw meteor shimmy. There's a lot more that meet, than meets the eyes, and that's what makes Daigo the GOAT once again for being able to see the nuance in these situations. So let's go ahead and set up training mode and take a look here. So I've already gone through the trouble of pre-recording a lot of different scenarios to try to recreate what we just saw in that clip. And I'm gonna break down the potential interactions that could have occurred. So here's a knockdown and meaty throw. So if I get in this situation and I get meaty thrown, I'm pretty much forced to tech. In a lot of ways i'm forced to attack or i am forced to to reversal those are the pretty much the only two options i have in that scenario besides maybe a back dash in order to avoid taking the throw damage i have to commit to something that is potentially unsafe no matter which way you slice it as we go through this you're going to be committing to something so we're going to figure out which options beat what and why we can choose between them and apply the mind games so uh, what else does this beat um, if I also try to immediately wake up with buttons? The meaty throw will, of course, beat that as well. So once again, it'll beat the jab, it'll tech the throw tech or delay tech, and it'll lose to EX flash kick. So those common options, that's what kind of happens when you do a meaty throw like that. So let's go ahead and try another one. Okay, here we have a shimmy. If I go for the immediate tech, which would have been the defensive option against the immediate throw in this situation, I obviously get baited. Quick rise, throw attack, I get hit by the fierce punch into EX and I die. However, there are other options that work here that didn't work in the previous scenario. If I wake up with buttons on a certain timing of a shimmy like this, I can actually wake up buttons here, right? I can do wake up jab EX, potentially get my turn back, call out the shimmy essentially, and get my opponent off of me. I can also maybe do something like a wake up crouching medium kick, a wake up low option in order to call him out because he's walking away from me. And the reason also besides walking away to bait the throw is also shimmies like this can also potentially beat reversals. It can also bait out an immediate reversal flash kick. So those are the kind of the layer one options that a basic shimmy will beat. Now let's check out the next option. Double shimmy, double shimmy. This one is kind of, kind of uh, dastardly, right? Because you might, you might have the discipline to not tech on the first one, 
But do you have the discipline to not attack on the second one? That's the real question. So imagine you're one hit away from stun. You don't want to take the throw necessarily, but you don't know when, when to tech. Double shimmy is just another layer on top of that. Um, you can still call it out depending on the timing. Um, there's also the potential for flash kick to work. You could try maybe delay flash kick, but that might get blown up by double shimmy. Immediate flash kick might get blown up by double shimmy. So a lot of ways it's hard to beat this, right? But they're not pressing any buttons, so they're close enough. You can try waking up with a button of your own. Maybe using EX meter to cancel out of that to take your turn back as well. Now, if we go to the next option here. Immediate meaty. So this is kind of a real basic option. So if you notice with the shimmy options, wake up buttons generally beat a lot of shimmy timings. There's a lot of nuance here because you can vary the timings of all these options, but I could really easily do wake up jab to EX Sonic Boom to potentially build some space or get plus frames from that. However, obviously, the reason why you don't just wake up buttons on every knockdown is they can just hit you. They can just go ahead and hit you meaty, and if you're mashing a jab on wake up, you're gonna get counter hit. Right? It's that simple. So the basic meaty option beats like the real level one option of like immediate mash back throw or uh, immediate mash jab. Now, next option here. Another double shimmy, but this time it goes into the throw. So, if I do quick tech right here, I'm going to be in a, in a bad spot. If I do quick tech, then block, I'm going to be in a bad spot. If I try to delay jab, I can potentially clip it. But once again, you're kind of forced to choose your options at certain timings. Even flash kick sometimes can work depending on the timing, but they might be walking back during that time. So as you can start to see the pattern here, a lot of the times in order to bait the throw, you have to expose yourself to buttons. In order to bait the flash kick, you're gonna have to leave space between them. Here's another variation of the knockdown pressure. And that's just, you know, kind of walking to range to, to get me to take an action and then it's blocking, right? So that'll be wake up EX flash kick, clean. However, there's a danger to this because if I just mash back throw on wake up, you will get thrown into the corner and that's obviously a huge losing situation. This is the advantage in many ways of having a reversal is that people do not want to stay too close to you on your wake up, even if they're trying to bait out reversals, because there's no way for you to both successfully bait the reversal and not get back thrown if you're too close. So generally when people do their mix up between throw and not throw, they're gonna leave a little bit of space because of this reason. Daigo and plenty of other high level players, when they have meter for reversal, you'll see on wake up that one of the options that they choose is immediate mash back throw, immediate. Because if it lands, because the opponent was scared of the reversal and they tried to bait it out, they get so much reward. They get immediate corner immediately out of nowhere, right? And that's the mind game there. So generally you see that at low level because people are just panicking. So oftentimes fast tech on wake up from low levels is not because they're thinking this advanced mind game. They're just kind of panicking and doing it. But at high level, it's definitely a valid option. I use also if I have full super available and I feel like they're scared of me doing wake up super. And in that clip that we watched, Daigo had a wake up super. He had a super available. Um, you can do immediate wake up throw in order to do that. Now, the other thing here in this situation is Colleen is doing uh, a crouch block, right? Wake up low is not going to work here. And from Guile, wake up low is actually negative four if I use that variation. And in a lot of situations, um, you know, wake up crouch and light kick, it's only plus zero on block. Colleen can actually press a three frame after blocking this up close. And this is not a great normal to get your turn back. So Col if you're one hit away from stun, Colleen can potentially just uh, press a jab after blocking wake up crouch and light kick and, and stun you right from that. Um, at worst, you guys might trade. So in a lot of ways, you know, sitting there and baiting the, the flash kick, it beats a lot of options, but it loses to wake up mash back throw. So how would you set up a situation to beat the flash kick and also avoid the back throw? Let's try another one here. So what if you left spaced and then just did a delay button? In that situation, I can't wake up back throw. You are out of range. I also 
can't reversal flash kick because you're doing a delay button. You're going to be blocking my flash kick. My jab's running good. My jab might not even reach if you back up far enough. And if I do wake up low, I'm not in a great position here to call out your shimmy. I'm negative four after that with Guile. Um, remember, Daigo did not have V Trigger, so he couldn't do something like V Trigger uh, Sweep to, to activate. And uh, his Crouch and Light Kick option doesn't have the best range, and often can leave him in a situation after where you can counter poke really easily. So, in a lot of ways, this option is pretty good, especially if Daigo or the Guile player is one interaction away from stun because it beats many of the options or is safe to the most options. So let's go ahead and take a look one more time at this clip in detail and kind of really look at the advantage situation. If you notice, Kawano does this two frame kill sequence of whiffing jab and whiffing light kick, meaning he has very little frame advantage once Daigo wakes up in this situation. If Kawano holds down back in this moment, and Daigo wakes up throws, Daigo will throw him. He's too close to be able to just hold down back in this moment. So the only way for Kawano to be able to both beat back throw, immediate back throw, and bait flash kick because he's scared of the meter, is to move backwards in this situation. So what does Daigo do? He holds forward and throws. Kawano is walking back in the situation, and he holds forward and throws. Hold forward throw can beat a lot of these situations that I was showing in this uh, these recordings. So not only does it beat the walk backwards and then hold down back to bait the throw situation, it can also deal with a lot of the shimmy situations. A lot of the time when people do a shimmy, they're walking backwards and pressing their button preemptively. Just, and then they'll confirm the cancel if they see that you whipped your throw. So in this situation, I'm actually punishing the shimmy. Because of the timing and the interaction, I actually throw her out of her fierce punch. Now, uh, you might be saying, okay, isn't that much riskier than just doing immediate wake up crouching medium kick to get her off you? And I would say, yes, it is. It is riskier. So what is the difference between doing wake up crouch and medium kick and wake up walk forward throw? The risk reward. Okay, so after crouching medium kick on hit, you do not have much advantage. If I land Crouchy Medium Kick on Colleen, and I'm in the corner, and I'm one interaction away from stun, I get a little bit of space, and that's it, and plus two. I can't cancel this into anything else, and I'm still potentially in range to get smacked by Colleen's Fear Sponge. Now imagine if she actually guarded it, right? In this situation, I'm in a pretty bad spot. I'm negative four if she blocks it, it's really hard to get in any space if she happened to block it, right? There's not too many things I can press here, which will get her off of me. She can press this button pretty confidently. There's also other buttons that she could press as well. So the problem here is Daigo needs to get a stun down. If he's gonna take the risk of doing something that could be easily meatied or thrown right away, he might as well do something that has the reward to potentially leave him alive. If he landed the crouching medium kick or just had the crouching medium kick blocked, he's still in danger of his stun not returning. It takes a decent amount of cooldown before your stun starts going down. So look at the stun situation. It's not until he's already active and in the throne and Colleen is hitting the ground does the stun start reducing. So once again, if you're going to lose in one interaction, do the interaction that's going to give you the most reward. There's very similar risks to doing wake up, crouching low, and walk forward throw on wake up. They beat very similar things. However, the reward in this scenario is that Daigo gets to do a move with more damage, more stun, and also occupies more time in order to reduce the amount of stun that he has. So it gives him the best of everything. So yeah, it really does beat a lot of options. Um, besides, I think the pure meaty, if Colleen goes for pure meaty, obviously you're just gonna get smack right there. But if she goes to shimmy in your grill and all that, she starts playing around too much, walk forward and throw will beat all the situations. And at worst, if she does like a delay back throw, you might just uh, tech her throw. So in a lot of ways, wait, walk forward throw is an amazing option when you have uh, resources to make them scared of your wake up. The main thing here to me is that Daigo is willing to not be reductionist. Reductionist thinking is what leads to stagnant play and leading to you not being able to make these kinds of plays in a clutch situation. People for the longest time and still to this day, they talk about Street Fighter V being only 
throw shimmy meaty there is so much you can do with these three options and modifying the variables of time time and risk reward there's a lot of modifiers to the ways you apply these things there's a reason why high level players talk about things like fast tech, immediate delay tech, delay delay tech, and all the other variations of these things. You see Daigo doing walk forward throw and wake up in high level situations in the grand finals of a CPT event. There's more than meets the eyes when it comes to applying and using all these different options at your disposal. Less is more in Street Fighter V, that's for sure. But um, you need to not be reductionistic. You need to be holistic with these, with these options. That's what Daigo always teaches us and that's why he comes fresh to every event because the the whole is uh, greater than the sum of its parts with Street Fighter V and its defensive and offensive options. So keep an open mind when thinking about this game. If you start to think that every knockdown situation is a 30-30-30, is a 33-33-33, or a 50-50, no 50-50 in most fighting games is really a 50-50. That is, that is grappler propaganda or anti-grappler propaganda, really. Most of the time, there's weight to every option. And then there's mind games on top of that, and there's risk reward, and there's likelihood, unlikelihood. There's so many more variables that go into an actual live fighting game situation than just guessing. Are you guessing? Yes, but there's a lot more to break down than that. So I love this clip once again. It's an amazing clip, not just because it was a ballsy call out from Daigo and it worked and and it showed people that they could do more with Street Fighter 5 than they thought possible but because it just shows how Daigo is always trying to think outside the box and how we we should all take a, a page out of Daigo's book and try to learn new ways to approach seemingly impossible situations and that's it for this video hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown hope you learned something new I learned something new you know I I thought of a new approach by watching Daigo do this as well. So shout out to Daigo and shout out to you for watching this video. Till next time, peace.